Outlined in red is the full keel of this 48 foot wooden diesel duct troller yacht design. The next few videos in this series will show the building of these keel subassemblies. This video will highlight the milling, measuring, lamination and shaping of the stem knee up forward, the transom knee aft and a deadwood piece that will bolster the strength of the forefoot. Hi, I'm Bill England of the Ambler Odyssey's YouTube channel where I am vlogging the build of a George Bueller designed 48 foot wooden troller yacht here in my Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Canada backyard boat shed. With the frames built, we are on to laminating the keel. When she is completed, we will sail the seven seas in search of adventure. Using the already made paper templates, I measure and stack the timbers to be used for each subassembly. With all the required boards cut to length, they are stacked again and the template reattached. Three timbers for what will be the stern knee. A little bit nervous. First time using epoxy resin. I was using the West Systems uh, 105 and uh, 205 hardener. And as they make quite clear, the majority of the problems when you're uh, using epoxy resin is not getting the ratio right between the epoxy resin and the hardener. So they were sold out of the pump kits uh, because uh, West Systems has pumps that deliver the 5 to 1 ratio of epoxy resin to hardener and they're sold out of uh, the pump kits where I bought it. So I had to do it by weight uh, and it's still the 5, five to 1 ra ratio so 5 grams to 1 gram. And I never, it's absolute experimentation to figure out how much I would need. And so I, d I decided on that essentially working in 50 gram increments for the resin, poured in 50 grams, thought, no, that's not going to be enough. Poured in 100 grams, thought, okay, that should work. And then added 20 grams of the, um, the hardener. And that, uh, that gave me definitely ample to do up these three uh, timbers, uh, two four foots and a three and a half, with some to spare. So I know roughly I can get, I estimate about eight to ten feet of boards covered, nine inch uh, with boards, with epoxy resin. So I, that'll be sort of my, my ratio. But no, it was, it, it was a success. And uh, so we're just going to remove these clamps. I made up the just these. No, oh, no. Apparently, I got some epoxy on that one. I made up these clamp boards uh, just so I didn't make any impressions in the. Uh, in the wood. Right. So 
like they say, the wood gives away before the epoxy. So I'm gonna have to sand this a little bit, a uh, little bit down. So, yeah, first section. That's bloody solid, and this is just a knee. Once I get the rest of the timbers milled up um, and epoxied up, then I'll just put my uh, template on here. I'll tape it on and then make the outline and then cut it and I'll have I'll have a stem knee. So I just finished epoxying three stacks that will together form the stern knee. Tomorrow I'll then epoxy these three sections together. The first assembly of the keel will be roughed, uh, roughed in. Pretty excited that I've, I've seemed to have succeeded with my first uh, epoxying. It was too hot this afternoon in the boat shed. It was about 37, and the recommended upper temperature to work with uh, West Systems 105 is 35, so erring on the side of caution. I waited until this evening, and it was more comfortable, 27, here in the boat shed. The mixing went well. Uh, I'm finding I get about nine feet of coverage, mixing 100 grams of 105 resin and 20 grams of the hardener. And so maintaining that five to one ratio. So that gives me a good um, sort of rule of thumb. Uh, tomorrow, when I uh, epoxy these sections together, um, obviously I won't need that much. So. I'll, I'll use just half that. The epoxy is pretty, pretty expensive, so I want to minimize the wastage. So uh, that's why it's important to have, to have a rule of thumb of how much coverage I'll get. So tonight I, I epoxied the fourth piece onto the first stack and then the two other, the six pieces of the two other stacks. I got lots more, uh, obviously a lot more. This is the second smallest uh, keel assembly. It's going to be fun working with uh, 8 foot, 12 foot lengths to epoxy. A great first go at uh, the first keel uh, assembly. When laminating a stack of boards thicker than my supplied 8 inch C clamps, I move on to the do it yourself threaded rod clamps and also bar clamps. The DIY clamps may take a bit more time to tighten and untighten, but they are friendly on the pocketbook. With a project of this size, I like to save a few pennies where I can. Mixing epoxy is kind of like watching paint dry, so here's a quick look at mixing a small batch up. Final glue up for the stem knee. Laminated the 13 uh, layers in uh, twos and threes, and now finally just down to the upper and lower. So I'm just going to mix up about two feet worth of the West System 105 epoxy resin. 40 grams of resin, 8 grams of the hardener, and that should almost finish, finish up the amount of epoxy I have. Are you ready? Clamps are ready. Ready, ready. So zero the uh, scale, 40 grams of resin. Mix well. Go back here. 
high school chemistry. Mixing two chemicals, exothermic reactions, five to one ratios. Should have paid more attention. So you kids out there in the high school chemistry, pay attention. You may uh, build a boat 30 years down the line. Kind of have to uh, remember why, how this all happened. Huh? and resin and the epoxy it's better to have a little too much enough to get the tension, tension on, because then I can still with just a little bit of tension on then I can still move the piece and line it up. Sometimes you just need the enforcer to line things up. And because I have that tension on there, it's not going to move too much. Hopefully not move anymore as I tighten. Yep, 
So here we have the stem knee all laminated up and just marking out the uh, tape the pattern on and I'm marking out the outline. procedure for the elongated squat triangular deadwood is the same as for the knees, just on a larger scale. With the keel subassemblies laminated, it is time to shape them. The first step is to remove the excess board length just outside the lines from the traced pattern. A circular saw is used to make an initial cut. A second pass will take the depth down to about two inches. By chiseling along the cut line, some excess wood is removed, revealing a 4 inch wide swath of uncut lumber along the center. Removal of the remaining excess was by good old hammer and chisel. Slow and steady wins the race. You can see by the amount of wood chips at my feet, I've been at this for a while. Makes good kindling for the fireplace though. After chiseling, out comes the angle grinder with a flat disc. At over 3000 RPM, it sands away the bumps pretty quickly.
although now fairly smooth, the face isn't smooth enough yet. So out comes the electric planer. You can both see and hear the face becoming smoother with each pass. Now to check my work. Using a square, I am checking to ensure that it is flat across the face. The final step is to give the face a light sanding to remove any little marks left behind by the plane. Heave ho, the knee is flipped around to finish the other face. Ta da! Two knees and a deadwood shaped to size. They will be put aside as I move on to the next keel subassembly. But for that, you'll have to join for the next video. Thanks for joining me for this episode. For a front row seat on this do-it-yourself boat build project, please like, subscribe, and be notified on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to the Ambler Odysseys. Till next time, toodly-doo.